Okay, let's talk some books. So this is going to be my weekly reading wrap up and I'm going to just share with you what's been going on in my reading life and probably some things that need to be cleaned up because I don't know how I have gotten to the point that I'm at this month. We could all try and figure that out together. Anyway, let's jump into it because I've got what seems like a decent amount of things to talk about. So I'll start per usual with my DNFs or the books that I did not finish. There is just one this week, and that is The Mirror Thief. So I was listening to this book on audio. I started it, I think, while I was driving to um, during my move. And yeah, still no clue. At some point, I must have stopped paying attention and I've missed what I've happened. Slash, I think the plot is actually just that confusing, or at least the structure of the book is a little all over the place-ish. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's it's not working for me. And I just decided, like, this is an interesting book. And if I really liked the genre and where the book was going as a whole, I would probably pick it back up as a physical read and just finish it like that. But I don't like it enough to do that, not even from the library. It's just a genre that I don't always read. It's kind of crime, magical realism, heist something. <laughs> it's an interesting structure, but it's just the, the topic and the main themes in the book are just one that just aren't catching me. And again, that could be the audiobook's fault. I'm not sure, but I'm letting it go. That gets me to the two books that I finished. Let me grab them. So I have finished two books since my last update. And the first book is The Last Children of Tokyo by Yoka Tawada. And I actually read this book in one day. I started it um, during a reading sprint that I was hosting on my channel, and I was able to finish it by that evening. I mean, it took me all day to read it. And I gotta be honest, partially just because it was strange. It was a strange story that I just felt like I didn't get, then I started to feel like I was getting what was happening, and then I started to feel like, nope, I don't get it again. <laughs> anyway, this book takes place in Japan during a time where basically there are problems with environmental contamination. The air is polluted, the water is polluted, other things are polluted, and the older eldest generation, which are the numerous people who are in their hundreds, they remember a time where things weren't contaminated. But the younger generations of people are really suffering and are sick from things. Um, and as a response, Japan as a whole has decided to sort of close itself off from the rest of the world. And even the different provinces within Japan are kind of like border states now where they may or may not be interacting with one another. And so you have this very interesting setup where you have Yoshiro, um, who is the great grandfather taking care of his great grandson, Mume. Um, and I'm sorry, I have zero Japanese pronunciation. So just, you know, be kind and bear with me. Um, Anyway, these two characters, um, they live together and they're trying to survive together. Yoshiro is like the healthy, like, hundred year old, like going jogging, doing his thing, uh, probably would be living his best life if it wasn't for the fact that he's really concerned about his sickly great grandson. So part of my time in this book was spent trying to figure out what happened to all those in between generations in the family and why they weren't prevalent. And what happened to them was not what I was thinking would have happened to them. And at the end of the day, I feel like this book was a mix of climate fiction as well as like societal commentary. And I think the odd thing for me was that there were a lot of sort of, I don't even know if critique is the right word, but there were a lot of sort of instances and statements being made about society and how it would treat young people. And a lot of it had to do with like, you know, we need to be careful they don't sit here, that they don't drink this, that they don't eat that, because all of this stuff is contaminated. Let's dig it out. Let's protect people from the stuff around us because everything's contaminated. And I think what I found confusing about that was I couldn't tell if this was like, this is bad, look what we've done to the world, like climate fiction, 
Or if this was more a satire of the community, like, oh my gosh, this is what happens when we all go out of control and we don't want to trust one another and we start getting to the point where we don't want to eat, drink, or be around anything because all of it has something in it that could kill us. Like, it just wasn't clear, I guess, what the commentary was trying to be made. There were just statements being made and not really ever interpreted in any sort of way, but I also didn't feel like I was able to interpret it and I couldn't tell if that was intentional. And I read the whole thing, but I was kind of like, I, I don't know where this is going. And then it ended and I do not understand the end of this book. Like I, I don't know what happened to the character. It made me question what happened throughout the whole story. I'm not sure what's real and what's not. <laughs> and not in a good way. Like none of that happened in a good way for me. And so at the end of the day, I ended up giving this book two stars because I just had too many questions that I was left with. There weren't enough answers. I felt directionless and it just, it just brought down my enjoyment level really low. Um, the writing in this, I would like to say is good, but I feel like some of the way it was written has to do with why I'm so confused. And other than that, I felt like it was a good setting and she made good use of the world that she built up. I like, or I don't know, did she make good use of the world that was built up? I, I question that as well, because I feel like better use of the world would have helped me understand where the direction of the story was going. Anyway, that's this book. I've said enough about it. <laughs> Uh, the next book I finished was The Lion Woman of Turan. I absolutely love the cover of this book. It's just amazing. And this is by Marjan Kamali, who is the author of The Stationery Shop, which is actually another book I'd like to read. And this was a really good story. It is about two young girls, or at least they start out young at the beginning of the book, Ellie and Homa, and they come from very different backgrounds. But due to situations and circumstances in Ellie's life, she goes from kind of a riches to sort of rags situation at the beginning of the book, and that's where she meets Homa. So she goes um, and starts living in a poor area and makes friends with one of the local girls. They instantly kind of hit it off, and um, what starts is a really close friendship. And I don't want to say a lot else about what happens in this book, because basically the premise of the book that you learn at the very beginning is despite the fact that they were very close friends, that they had this very strong relationship, something happens to the relationship that ends up splitting them and separating them from as friends. And Ellie, who is the narrator of the book and whom we follow through her whole life, over the course of her life, kind of regrets a lot of decisions and choices that she made in this relationship and is trying to understand how it got to where it is when we get back to the present. So you kind of start in the present, you go back into the past and see their entire relationship and come back to the present at the end of the book. And I really enjoyed this book and it reminded me a lot of Snowflower and the Secret Fan. So if you've read that book and you liked the structure and the premise of it, having a first person narrator kind of take you through a friendship, and all the sort of dynamics and issues and things that can create conflict in that, then you will probably like the line uh, Women of Turan. And I ended up giving it five stars, which I was not expecting. Um, typically, this is like a genre that I enjoy and will read in a book of this length and this topic. Like, I will really enjoy and move on. But this book really hit home to me. It really moved me emotionally. And I felt like there were a lot of themes in this book that I would want to revisit. Um, and if it really wasn't for that last point, it probably would have been a four. But I really do feel like this. there was some really clear, excellent writing in here. And it really made me think about friendships as a whole. And yeah, I would definitely reread this book at some point. And it's definitely a book that I would lend out to friends or family. All right. So now to get into what I am currently reading. And here is where the problems start. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is another book that I am listening to on audio. And that is The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. I don't know what initial I was about to throw in the middle there, but it was the wrong one. Anyway, The Parable of the Sower is another dystopian novel that talks about a young girl who, for the life of me, and this is why I'm not a fan of audiobooks, I can't remember whether or not she's ever named. 
If I figure that out, I'll put her name on the screen. The Parable of the Sores. I'm really enjoying this book. This is the second book that I've read by Octavia Butler. The first one was Kindred, and man, that book was a good book. I felt like there were some plot holes, but I enjoyed is not the word because that book is harsh. But it was a solid book for sure. This one, I have to say, I like way better. There is still some graphic body horror imagery stuff going on like Octavia Butler will put it in your face for sure um but that said I feel like this feels a little less violent than Kindred or at least it's not as gut punching I don't know but the whole plot of the novel is so fascinating it's definitely a dystopian world it's based in California I think the LA area and what you have at the beginning of the book is our first person narrator she is discussing what life is like living in sort of a self-made community compound and really all this self-made community compound is is basically a small cul-de-sac neighborhood that they have turned into what they basically consider a fortress by building up or reinforcing, you know, the walls around them. So it's kind of like your gated community on steroids is what's going on here. And the reason they are in this like secured community now is because the rest of the world outside the wall, as they refer to it, has gone crazy. Um, there is violence and fights and unrest and drugs and all of those things, but to a much more hyper level than the world we know now. Um, pyromaniacs are running wild, there's thieving, and pretty much if you go outside the wall, you could get injured or even die, and like brutally. Like it's not even just like your typical sort of violent crime. Um, and so she initially starts out by just sharing the story of what that's like and how that is going. And just uh, as she notices things in her community start to disintegrate. First, kind of noticing that the things within the community don't quite uphold to the standards and certainly not the Christian standards that her father is trying to keep everybody involved in, but that even with outside the wall, things seem to be getting worse and things seem to be starting to come over the wall. And the book just goes on from there. It is so well written. It is such a gripping narrative voice that it really just keeps you moving through the book. I'm listening to about 10% of uh, a day and I get really frustrated if like there's background noise or something like that and makes it hard for me to hear this audiobook because I don't want to miss a word. Like there are so many fascinating questions that she asks, so many themes that she talks about that are just things that we all need to think about. Um, and I'm just thoroughly enjoying it. I do have a physical copy of this book, but not on me. It's in storage. And man, am I regretting that because I really wish I had this book to annotate. Uh, Unless anything changes, I could say already that this book is going to be a five-star read for me. And yeah, I just can't wait to see how it finishes out. And I guess we'll see in the future. But that said, I still have plenty of other books to talk about. Um, I guess I'll go with another book that's not an ongoing read, but that I should hopefully finish by the end of this month. And that would be a novel bookstore. I just started this a few days ago. I am barely into it. And it's interesting. The premise of this book, in short, is that there is a small French town that has just, you know, your typical lovely characters in it and who all know one another maybe a little too well. And um, people in this town start suddenly dying off. And I guess at some point the, uh, the connection that is made between them is that they have all recently expressed their opinion about literature. And so I don't know what that means and where that's going to go. I haven't gotten to that part in the book. I mean, I'm really still in the exposition. So at this point, people are just getting knocked off. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll be interested to see where this goes. I'm thinking it's going to be very interesting. However, I've already found in the first little section, there were a couple of writing moments where I was kind of confused and I wasn't sure if that was because of the way it was translated or if there was just something else that I was missing. So even though I started a couple days ago, I haven't gotten that far and I haven't picked it up again recently. 
Um, I don't know if it's because I was starting to feel confused or if it's just because I have so many books going at once. Speaking of so many books going at once, I am still working my way through and ladies of the club. This is my book choice that I'm focusing on for the big book summer challenge. And it is a big book. I am currently on page 664 of like 1430. And yeah, I have so many thoughts about this book at this. I have so many thoughts about this book at this point. And I think my main ones is whether or not the author is actually achieving what apparently is her stated goal um, or was her stated goal in writing this book. Basically, at the time that she wrote this book, Sinclair Lewis had published Main Street, which to this day apparently is one of his most well-known books. And it's a satire about small town America and just basically how small minded it can be. Um, this book was written back in 1920s, I believe, and uh, Helen Hoover Santmeyer just felt like he got it wrong and that that was just a horrible sort of perspective of what small town life was like. And this book was supposed to be sort of her response to his, you know, small town. Um, and I realized like there's no coincidence that his book was called Main Street and that a major feature in this book is what happens on Main Street. Uh, that said, I feel like she's spending 1,430 pages proving him right. <laughs> and clearly she intended to prove him wrong, but this book is just starting to feel more and more like a whole bunch of stories about nothingness combined with their small bigoted minds. <laughs> And I hate to say that because I want to like the characters in this book better. But I don't. Every time I start to like them, she has them do something that makes me go, yeah, no, never mind. And there's already so much built up that it's like, yeah, no, I'm still not liking you. So at this point, I am still reading this book because one, I, I am kind of invested in it. <laughs> like I read a lot. I just want to finish and do a full review of the book. And in addition to that, I really want to read Main Street now and get the full comparison of the two. Um, so in order to do that, I really do feel like I need to finish this book in full because I also feel like it's hard to give a full review of a book that you haven't finished. The book isn't bad. Like, I don't know that I would say that the author herself has all the small minded traits of these characters because there are definitely times where she seems aware that they're being small minded or racist or sexist or whatever. But she's also drawing a picture of people who just accept it in others and I, not in a good way. And so it's, it's interesting to kind of explore like why that may be happening in her writing. So to read this book, you are going to learn a lot historically, but in sort of a like accept it and maybe I'm going to convince you to accept it kind of way. But it is a, a very interesting historical book. I just don't think in the way she intended. I think she intended you to like all these characters and to agree with thoughts like that. Whereas I'm finding this is a really interesting historical look at what the culture thought and acted like and felt was okay during that time period and what were tensions during that time versus like what was just accepted. So if you like to read historical fiction that's along those lines, then I would pick this up. If those types of statements, and especially if they then have to do with gender and race and other things, like light you on fire, yeah, don't, don't read this book because you'll just be annoyed. Okay, moving on. I have two more books that I'm currently reading. The next one is The Year of Wonder. And this, as it says on the title, is classical music to enjoy day by day. And so each day there is a little entry featuring a piece of music and um, a the composer of it and just, you know, some a short like one page blurb 
about said composer and or music that you're listening to and I'm really enjoying it. I have a playlist going. I will probably cease mentioning this every week because I'm listening to it each day and I'm creating the playlist. So I'll probably just remind you once a month that you can check out the songs that I have added. But since my last check-in, I think I added three more songs, maybe four more. I think there's a total of six or seven on there now that you can listen to and I'm really enjoying it. Um, some surprise listens this this week were a um, classical music piece by Duke Ellington. Um, and it was not a work of jazz. It was a work of like definitely classical music in the traditional sense of the word. There was a, another piece by an Ethiopian nun. And there was also a third piece by um, a gentleman whose name is Joseph Ballone. Um, I'm sure that's not how you pronounce his last name, but I'll put his name on the screen. And he was known um, as basically the Black Mozart. He was in the 1800s, I mean, in the 18th century, he was alive and composed music. And he was really well known in his own life and work for the music he created. And I think that's just so fascinating. So there's three right there, Black classical musicians that are in here. And that's another thing that I would really like to point out about this book is that at one point, um, Clemency even talks about how a lot of people think of classical music as like long dead <laughs> white European men creating and composing music. That is not what this book is. Um, she does classical music from the past all the way up to present day when this book was published in the 2000s. And she includes, you know, all the ones that we've you know, know like Mozart, both Beethoven. She includes people that are like older classical musicians that are lesser known, but that are really well known in like the deep musical sphere or that she personally just likes. There are also inclusions of people from different ethnicities and backgrounds um, that were both like older, like uh, the gentleman who is known as the Black Mozart, as well as more recently, such as Duke Ellington. She includes people who composed classical music, music, but may have been more well known for their jazz or music in another genre. Um, and she also includes a lot of women. So there is just a great selection. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm really getting a good sense of the types of classical music that I'm drawn to. Hint, it's a lot of piano and a lot of nocturnes. So that's that. And then the final book is my buddy read for The Mysteries of Paris. And I said that I was going to wait and talk about it in my monthly wrap up, but I'll go ahead and talk about it now because I finished reading book five, which was our change to new goal for this month. So book five, there was, oh my gosh, just so much going on in this book. There is so much scheming and conniving and backstabbing and catching up with people. In fact, we caught up with one character who started out seeming like she was going to be a main character and then disappeared for hundreds of pages out of this book. She finally came back and we found out what's going on with her, though not everything about how she got to where she is. At least I don't remember. And um, yeah, it was just good to catch up with some of the people in this book and to see where all the scheming is going. Because, I mean, there there are stereotypical villains who can learn things from all the scheming and backstabbing and trickery and befuddlement going on in this book. And there's also like randomly a prankster going around who is just pranking this one family and I don't know, semi like psychologically torturing this one guy like not really like he's just pulling pranks on them but the other guy is like he just so emotionally overreacts that it's ridiculous anyway that is everything that i am currently reading those are the books that i finished that's all the things so here it is and i'll have my phone represent the parable of the sower and i'm thinking to myself and nicole what are you doing why are you reading this many books at the same time? Like, finish something. But I just feel like, like there's a lot going on here, and I'm really feeling like at the end of July, I want to reduce the stack down a lot because I'm finding what's happening is that instead of just being able to sit down and read one book, I'm having to, like, piecemeal it out in a lot, and I'm not enjoying that as much. I mean, it's working, but I... I don't want to keep doing that because then I hit a point where it's like, oh, but I really want to get back to this book. Before I can read that book, I need to read this book and that book and listen to this. And it's too much. 
So I think I'm about to embark on a little mini project to get down this reading stack. Like I'm going to read to zero. I <laughs> like, and, and I don't even know if that's really realistic, but I really want to get it down to so that there's only one book I'm reading at a time. That's, that's the goal. We'll see if it happens. Maybe I'll like vlog that or something and go from there. But in the meantime, that's it for today. Let me know what you've read or finished or are currently enjoying. And I will talk to you next time.